Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas here, my name is Shanks and today on the epic map Anori and we are playing a 2v2 El Clasico matchup, good against evil in battle for middle of 1 on the patch 2.22, I am playing Isengard, my ally is Mordor, we are against Gondor and Rohan. So Saruman and Sauron united, united kingdom, <laughs> okay. So, I like to play Isengard a lot, especially with a Mordor ally. We should actually have so incredible a lot of leadership. With increased DPS, increased armor and durability, our units are going to not only be immortals, but also they will be hitting like an absolute track. And I personally like to open with Double Furnace in my castle when I play Isengard, just to make sure that my money is looking good. You know, for the worst case scenario, if I lose one of my mills early on, which I don't hope is gonna happen, but you know... Hope for the best, be prepared for the worst. So, early on, let's grab the back mill first, then the front mill. And early on against good factions as Isengard or Mordor, you want to play a bit more defensively because your mills are more valuable than enemy farms. So you don't want to go one for one. You don't want to trade one farm against one mill. That's not what you're looking for. We need to play a bit more defensively to keep our mills protected. And that's gonna be kinda easy with the Urukai. Remember, this is no rubble of mindless orcs, my dear uh, King Theory. <laughs> These are Urukai. Their armor is thick and their shields broad and their schlong are long. I heard. That's what she said. Okay, so peasants, they don't stand a chance. I'm gonna use Warchan just to make sure that we don't receive too much damage. I don't even need to use Warchan to win this fight. But this way I can kill them a bit faster and also help out my ally who had not a good start. His orcs were actually running into the troll. <laughs> That's a very bad start. Unfortunately, he will be losing this mill, which is not a very great situation. So, I will be filling up my base with furnaces exclusively before making anything else. This way, I can finally go for the armor, uh, armory and also for army at the same time. And my money is gonna look great and Gucci. As you can see, the peasants, they don't stand a chance. Running away from the Urukai is not even an option because Uruks are the fastest units in the game, fastest infantry units. And the Hobbit couldn't get cloaked either. So the Hobbit is going to go down. There we go. Hobbit. Hobbit, you will die. Meriodok Brannybok. Look at him, guys. He's th he thinks he can outrun my Uruks. He's out of his mind. Let me tell you that much. Oh, oh, the last hit. <laughs> the invisible hit with the sword. Okay, my ally lost actually one of the mills. Um, and the soldiers are still undamaged. He might even lose the second mill, which is not a great start into the game from my ally. And Mordor struggles a lot. When you have a rough start, your troll cage is going to be extremely delayed. And yeah, for that reason, we need to play definitely great in order to help our ally out a little bit. So he can get back into the game. I mean, on the bright side, we have a full base. So now we will be building up the Uruk pit. We need to recruit some crossbowmen because the crossbowmen are going to level up the Uruk pit a bit faster. This way we can get the Uruk pit to level 2 and recruit some pikemen to counter the enemy Gondonites or Rohirrim. I have Sauron, but oh, smart move from Gondor. Okay, now we cannot fight this really. Uh, we are in a bad spot, guys. Very smart move from Gondor. He was patient. He didn't go for the, for the heal. I mean, I also was expecting him to go for the heal, but that's like the mind game situation. As Gondor against Mordor, you can wait until your opponent using one of the power points, like Eye of Sauron or the Tainted land, and then you can cover them if you want to with the Elven Wood. So that's what he did because Elven Wood negates all our leadership bonuses and makes our units weaker. That's why we can't fight. But luckily for me, I will have Crossbowmen coming on uh, on the field very, very soon. And with them, I can keep my distance and take down those soldiers slowly but surely. Come on, crossbow man, I need you. Also use the wedge formation for more DPS. And also build towers, guys. I see many, many times in multiplayer matches that people, they don't like to invest 150 for building towers. But 150 is going to make you feel safe, right? And that's worth it. You know, just in case something bad happens and then you have like security protecting your castle early on. Okay, the farm will be taken down. The soldiers, they don't stand a chance. They will be also going down slowly but surely. We have a lot of money, actually. We can even go for lures very, very soon. But I want to actually make more army first and get the Uruk pit to level 2 as quickly as I can. You don't stand a chance. 
Now we can also creep. We have Warchan, we have two crossbow men, we have one Urukai, even though the Urukai is badly damaged, but we can still creep with them, with the Warchan. Creeping is very important in battle for middle of one. Look, we can deny him to creep this. Normally the Rohirrim are countering our units, but we have, you know, two crossbow men, and with Warchan he will deal more damage. And what we need to do with the Uruks, we gotta slow down the soldier. Uh, Slow them down, slow them down, nice. That's very important. Now he can charge into the second battalion anymore. And as he slowed down, as you can see, he will seeking so incredible a lot of damage from our crossbow man. He will be barely able to survive. Unfortunately, it was really close. We almost destroyed him. Now the creep is going to be free and we can get this money. And that's going to be very helpful to, for us to build the armory and get upgrades purchased. Like heavy armor. Uh, I mean, you are looking for three upgrades in this matchup. You want to get heavy armor. Uh, fire upgrade and also the banner banner is very important for the evil factions because evil factions unlike good factions have no well for the recovery this rohirrim can't do much we can combine them now level level two combo battalion and we are still war chanted by the way that's why those combos are hitting like an absolute track and we are in a phenomenal spot ladies and gentlemen phenomenal spot even though our ally is kind of behind but i was also stealing one of his <laughs> settlements now as we are talking i have three lamermans outside which makes me quite rich and in this situation, when you play Isengard and Mordor on the map Anurian, Isengard is the carry faction. Isengard has to be the carry because Mordor doesn't need that much money. All Mordor has to do is recruit trolls one by one and recruit one or two drummer trolls. And that's all you gotta do. Then you can save up for a Witch King later on. But you don't need to do much more in this matchup as Mordor. Because you are more like a sportive faction player. Okay, almost two power points collected too. Uh, the problem is, or I mean, it's not a problem, it's kind of okay. Uh, but the armor or the upgrades from the Isengard faction are quite uh, expensive. And for that reason, you cannot rush them. You know, Urukai crossbowman combo all alone costs us 600. And then each upgrade is also really a lot. That's why you need to make sure to build furnaces inside your castle when you're playing Isengard. Because the steel bonus is much more important and impactful than the good bonus you would get to make your war carries cheaper okay so rohirrim are running it down they have no upgrades yet they have no chance and also with the pikemen we should be able to protect this we can now take down this farm slowly but surely our ally is also getting back into the game i'm expecting to see some mountain trolls very very soon and until then we need to play a little bit more slow you know and the enemy is making a huge mistake you don't want to go double cavalry the double stable when gondor is going for his stable rohan shouldn't when rohan goes for the stable Gondor shouldn't because at some point of the game you cannot fight and win the game anymore with Gondor Knights and Rohirrim all alone that's not possible because we have hard counter units we have pikemen from Isengard and trolls from Mordor what can Gondor Knights or Rohirrim do against that the answer is nothing so Rohan's goal should be to recruit Rohirrim archers when you are looking for mobility or by the middle camp make elven units when Gondor wanna go for the combos you can start with Faramir, Boromir get them to level 4 and 5 to unlock leadership bonuses and then you have some DPS and also threat against the enemy trolls and pikemen. If you don't, it's going to be bad. So we can creep this, no problem. Yes, now Elma and Theoden are in the field. Elma is a hero. You need to get him to level 4 and to unlock his leadership bonuses. And for that reason, you need to recruit him as soon as you can. You know, skip the skeeble, uh, sk <laughs> skip the steeble and rush him first. Then you have him early on, and then you can creep the war player, troll player, and eventually get him to level 4, which is a huge, massive power spike for the Rohan Gondorf army because then you have the additional burst damage to kill trolls pikemen way way faster okay so we are I mean my ally has troll cage now uh, what I don't want to have I don't want this game to go too long and give Gondor the chance to recruit Gandalf or give Gondor the chance to recruit um, Trebuchet build Trebuchet or, you know, Rohan getting stronger with upgrades, fire arrow upgrade on his Rohir marches. Because then, if this is going to happen, we will be in a campy situation. We cannot really... I mean, we can fight them always, but they can hit and run. And we cannot really leave our base anymore. Oh, what is he doing? Oh, he's not paying attention. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. He was not paying attention for five seconds. And that's a long time in RTS games. And the Rohirrim battalion has been taken down. He has heroes at the bottom side, but we have lords now up on the field. With lords, we can cripple eventually. So, long story short, um, he's saying, let me take it. Okay, no problem, you can take it. But he has Hobbit here, I believe. Hobbit cloaked, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so, oh, look at that. Looks like you want to go for a rush. Let's use Warchant. 
Oh, he goes for that small trample. Can we cripple? Cripple, please. Um, oh, actually, I wanted to cripple Theory, not Elma. <laughs> it is whatever. It is whatever. Elma is gonna definitely die. There is no way he can survive that. But the problem is they are coming to my base. So I need to recruit some more pikemen and deal with this combo. This combo is no upgrades. It will be taken down in a second. Oh, what is he doing with the Rohirrim? Oh, he's rushing also with the theory from his ally for additional DPS and armor. Heal has been used. You have only one pikeman, but oh, I didn't change formation just in time. Uh, I might be forced to go back. But what I now will ask my ally very soon is to attack the Rohan castle. Trolls are able to attack walls and gates too. So you don't need to be recruit siege weapons like Ballista or Trebuchet or Catapult in this matchup. You can simply recruit trolls and this way we can break the wall. So we're under attack, but I believe we should be in a, in a good spot. Yeah, my ally has also trolls, very, very nice from him to help me out. Unfortunately, uh, can I cripple? Can I cripple, please? Um, oh, he doesn't, he won't. I think he, I'm gonna miss it. Watch, watch this. Oh yeah, I missed it. <laughs> my bad. Okay, it's okay, Theodin. I will let you live this one last time. Okay, so we are in a in a very good spot. We have now three combos. We have one pikeman always with the combos. As you can see, I don't make this pikeman crossbowman combination. I'm not I'm not a big fan of them because I believe they are not very good and very you know impactful. They are kind of very weak against anything but horses. And for that reason, I prefer having one solo pikeman or two solo pikemen inside the army. Let's send. Let's go now to attack Rohan guys. Oh, he's using the Arvin wood, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter. There is no fight anyway. So now we can attack the Rohan wall, and the second the wall is broken, we can go inside the jeans and finish off Rohan. I mean, they have to fight this, right? Um, the thing is, what they have to do is, the second they see us coming, Rohan has to build a statue and a well, and eventually ask his ally for help. With many, many horses and Theodin plus uh, statue leadership, they might be able to defend as we have no drama troll as we are talking, right? We have only Warchant. And only one single pikeman, so it's definitely defendable. But at least in the worst case scenario, I want to put pressure. That's going to buy my ally a bit of time. And also, we will be able to break one part of the wall, which is going to create constant pressure on the enemy Rohan castle. And I want to make sure to protect the troll cage from my ally. Troll cage is the most valuable production building in the mortal castle. Especially when you are playing a 2v2 match and your ally is Isengard. Look at this. Gondor is... I mean, that's a mistake from them. What is Gondor doing? You need to help your ally. I mean, the tower, I can take it down. That's why we also choose, by the way, Rohan. Because the Rohan battle tower can be targeted by fire or arrow upgraded combos. Gondor wall or Gondor tower can't. So we can take it down slowly but surely. The second troll is coming. Slowly, uh, the wall is pulling apart. I mean, we have too many pikemen and too many trolls inside the ally's castle. There is not much you can do. What is Theodin doing? Hey, Theodin. <laughs> Theodin is like, what is happening out there? Should I describe it to you or you want me to bring you a box? Okay, Warchan and go inside the jeans, boys. Inside the jeans. Okay. So, we can just focus on the buildings. Looks like they will give up this castle. I don't know if he actually bought the middle camp, but if he didn't, Rohan will be defeated. We have too much DPS here. We have Warchan plus Eye of Sauron, 100% more damage. Oh, oh, he want to come from behind, but no, 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 good sir. No, 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 no. You cannot backdoor me. Trust me on that one. Okay. So Rohan is billing. And looks like they will... Oh, hold on a second. Dude, I'm tunnel vision focused on the castle. But it's okay. He lo I lost my Uruk pit, but it's okay. I have already a lot of units on the field. Rohan is demolishing everything. He might buy the middle camp now. Do not be defeated. And Gondor is losing a lot of these Gondorites. The Rohan castle has been entirely destroyed, ladies and gentlemen. And GG is going to be called already. Okay, that's it. Dude, below, you know, less than 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this was, you know, kind of showing you the power of Isengard and Mordor combination. And hopefully, later, we will also be able to play Gondor Rohan against Mordor Isengard to see the strategy possibilities in that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this was enjoyable, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves, keep hitting like a truck, and also stay beyond standards. Peace out.